Okay, you're going to see and hear a lot of things that are similar here to when we were doing sine stuff. What's cosecant? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And like we were doing when I was saying let's evaluate cosecant, we're not going to evaluate cosecant. We're going to evaluate sine and then flip it over. Same thing when we graph it. We're not going to graph cosecant. We're going to graph sine. All right? And at this point, spending two and a half days on that and the homework, you should be pretty good at this. Okay? Now, a couple of things are going to go into this. Right? We've got our phase shift here equals zero and two pi. So we're back to zero and two pi is the beginning and end of the period of the sine wave. Add pi, multiply by three, x equals three pi. Add pi, multiply by 3, x equals 9 pi. Or if you want, multiply everything by 3 and go from there. So we have our beginning and end of the period. The change in x is the period length. What's the period if it goes from 3 pi to 9 pi? 9 pi minus 3 pi, which is 6 pi over 4. So this is 3 pi over 2. Okay, now, we're, gonna have, we're probably going to have to get cute with the scale that we use for this, because if we use 3 pi over 2 as our scale, we're probably not going to be able to fit all of this on our graph paper. That's a problem that we're going to have to deal with when we're doing this, okay? But we know what we want our change in x to be. We know where the beginning and end of the period go. All right, now, I don't have the graph paper in front of me, but I can talk you through this, okay, because it hasn't happened yet. So you have your graph paper. If you look at this, you have what? Six, you have six tick marks. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we count three pi over two, that's what? One and a half pi? That's one and a half pi, three pi, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine. So actually we can fit that, which is nice. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We can't fit it. Okay. But let's just say we didn't. Let's mess with this for a little bit. Okay. Let's make our scale 3 pi. And, 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 and I'm doing this just to prove a point. If this is 3 pi, this is 6 pi, and that's 9 pi. Let's do this. Okay, let's make this our scale. Not because we're doing cosecant, but just to do something different rather than making our change in x uh, the same as our scale. So you should label your x-axis in terms of as a scale of 3 pi. So since we're doing a sine graph, we know that our first point is at 3 pi over 2. We know that our last point is at 9 pi over 2. We know that directly in between these two points, there's another critical point. And directly in between these two, there's one, and there's one here. Okay. So the point that I'm trying to make is, even if we can't make our scale the same as our change in x, there's always one point in between these two, and there's one point in between these two. So it's really a sequence of midpoints, if you will, between these critical points. Okay. You follow? So, now we're going to graph our sine wave. Remember, this is what we're graphing. We're graphing a sine wave. So, uh, what do we do with our y values? The first point in a sine wave is supposed to be at 0, but we have a vertical shift of 2. So, this point is moving up 2 units. The second point in the sine wave is supposed to be 1, has the y coordinate of 1. We move it up 1 unit. This point moves up to 2. This point, the fourth point in the sine wave, is supposed to be negative 1, but we add 2, so now it is at positive 1. And then last but not least, we have oops, our final intercept. So our sine wave, you'll forgive me because I'm trying to do this freehand, looks like this. Okay, This is the graph, and we can continue this. Uh, so we have intercept max, intercept min, intercept max, intercept min, intercept max, so on and so forth. So we have this look to our sine wave. All right? Now, this is the sine graph. But remember, we aren't doing sine, we're doing cosecant. So, something you have to keep in mind. Cosecant is the, re the reciprocal of sine, right? So, because sine has values that are zero, not these ones, but they were supposed to be, this was supposed to be an intercept. This was supposed to be an intercept. This was supposed to be an intercept. So all of these points that were intercepts in the original graph of sine, if you turn that over, now you're putting 
a zero in the denominator, right? Same idea, like if the sine of theta is one half, the cosecant of that angle is two over one. Well, what if the sine of theta is equal to zero? What does cosecant become? Cosecant becomes one over zero, which is bad. So we have undefined values again, just like tangent graphs, okay? So just like when we were graphing tangent, we had to worry about those, oh, just we had to worry about those values that gave us undefined outputs. We have to worry about that with cosecant, and it's pretty simple. It's not as complicated as it seems. Bottom line is this, okay? Wherever the intercept points were supposed to be, you put asymptotes on your graph. Asymptote, 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 asymptote. Every single point that was supposed to be an intercept, we're going to make an asymptote. Now, because cosecant is the flip of sine, we take this piece that falls in between these two asymptotes, we take that frown and we turn it upside down. We flip it. So the cosecant graph is here. This is sine. We graphed sine in order to get cosecant. Now this, this smile, we turn that upside down and we give it that asymptotic behavior. So we were using the sine graph to give us those bumps. The intercepts become asymptotes and then the bumps we flip. 